play a lot of games. You just broke the world record for getting on the Big Lenny Live. How did you do it? Five seconds? You must have been waiting for it. Brent, you too. That's not bad. 20 seconds. Camden is third. Chalik Lizzie's fourth. Louie is fifth. Tom Black is sixth. Raymond Rieger is seven. Foul Place 2.0 is eight. Jake Sellers is nine. Jaggers game time is 10. Civilian Robert Banks. Yeah, I attribute high intensity training to more than 90% of the success in developing skeletal muscle. And the development of skeletal muscle is multi purpose in life, not only for sports, but general health and well being. And I want to thank a longtime Misfit Maniac, Dan Beetzel, for sending me a package with four books on high intensity. As you can see right here, all written by Dr. Ellington Darden, who experimented with test subjects on these training principles. And of course, everybody knows Arthur Jones, who developed Nautilus and used to have a compound in Delon, Florida. He adopted that the high intensity principles on himself as well as many others and trying to develop something that would replace a barbell. I don't believe that Arthur Jones has replaced a barbell, but those can see that machines are probably more in use today than ever. And I admit back in the day, I tried to use as little machines as possible, but with certain injuries and certain things, and certain segments of the population, they're indispensable. So, Dan, or before I get to that, um, very few people know how a high intensity trend actually got started. It started in 1945. There was an army physician, Dr. Thomas DeLorme, who was in charge of the rehabilitation of servicemen after World War II, when there were plenty of injured servicemen with injuries of all types. And he wanted to improve on the rehab system that was, wasn't giving the kind of results that the military wanted. So he developed a system of training with weights, three sets of 10, and he emphasized progressive overload, which means a rehabilitative patient would start off with a lightweight. As most of you have, and I know I have, when I had to go to physical therapy after torn bicep tendons and things like that, they have you work at very light weight and every time you come in, you do a little more as far as resistance. And that's the foundation of all training and muscle growth and muscle strengthening, you have to provide progressive resistance over time or the muscle will not change. And by changing, what you're doing is breaking down the fibers on a microscopic level, the muscle fibers, and through nutrition and sleep and what have you, you're building them stronger and thicker which makes for a less injury prone athlete, number one, and one that's de able to develop more force, such as sprinters. So 
Thomas Delorme started it. Arthur Jones and Ellington Darden experimented with it. And bodybuilders like Mike Menser, Casey Vieter, actually both the Menser brothers, as well as multi Mr. Olympia Dorian Yates, pioneered it in the gyms for bodybuilding. And also Dave Palumbo, who developed one of the most massively muscular bodies in history, always went by those principles. And so did myself and Andrew Kalora back in our strength and size heyday of the early 2000s and late 90s. We would do, as I said many times, a warm up set and then we do two sets to failure, usually in a six to ten, six to ten rep range. Um, and people were shocked at how many few work sets we did. But the thing was, say, for instance, on a bench press, I was doing about 365 for six to 10. And Angie was doing 495 for six to 10. So all that weight and all that tension is certainly going to break down more fibers and our protocol at the time developing quicker and thicker. And we were able to obtain massive strength and enormous body weights and muscle size. And then when we finally died it off or we shrunk our fat cells for bodybuilding competition, we had quite a substantial amount of muscle there. Now, both of us, you know, everybody else, you're going to run into things like injuries. I know I have different factors where you can't lift the same weight on the same movement, but you still, I mean, if you have to switch movements, you have to train progressively. Always, there's no way around it. And unfortunately, as we age, it becomes extremely difficult to do that. Because if it wasn't, people would be bench pressing two or 3,000 pounds in their 50s. So you got to be clever and work around it, but never abandon that foundation. And I just want to point out that Dan Beetzel, who sent me these books, and I have other books in a storage unit. Uh, I want to thank him for that. And he wrote a nice letter thanking him for years of motivation, inspiration. He's a longtime Delray Misfits watcher. And he says it remains so to the end of time. And he says, he points out the fact that back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, you didn't see young men like today always trying to look mean and tough with tattoos and the broccoli heads with the mirror selfies but they went in there and trained intensely very short very brief very intense and they were out of there you got to get your meal and they didn't hang around the gym or use it as a social atmosphere now myself i've always preferred being quiet, and I certainly do, of course, unless it was an old Delray Misfits video, we had to talk. And if I'm doing a training video, you know, you got to talk a little bit, but I prefer not to. And these books give you everything you, I need to know, anybody needs to know even being written in the late 80s, early 90s. It talks about a, a sound nutritional approach. Nothing going overboard, but gradually increasing nutrients and calories until you achieve your, your weight goals. And it also talks about the importance of progressive overload, using the form to tear down the fibers 
and concentrating while you're, while you're training. And everything you need to know about sleep, recuperation, which, you know, you, people always point to Arnold and his seven, six or seven day a week routines. But Arnold only weighed 230 pounds at 6'2". That's considered small. And Arnold was very young when he competed. And they, yeah, they ate good, but Arnold could have been a lot bigger. I don't know about better, but he just didn't have the muscle mass some of these other guys do. And that shows the failure of the more is better training seven days a week in a gym, three hour workouts. Some guys used to train four or five hours. I, I heard and you're just basically wasting away. So these men brought up the importance of sleeping and eating as equal importance to your training and training's a brief stimulants. It's got to be heavy. It's got to be intense and you can't go into a gym with a attitude like you go into a barber shop or, a, or a, it's got to be you're focused on on your lips and you're going to grind out as many repetitions as you can and try to do more than you did while maintaining your form it's not easy it's a never-ending struggle the uh, weights never get lighter it never gets easier and remember, if your heart's not beating a thousand miles an hour, you're not sweating in a gym, and you notice things happening in a gym, you're not hard training hard enough, and you're not focused enough. I remember a lot of great lifters would say, a bomb can go off outside the gym, they wouldn't even notice because they're focused on their training. And that's how it should be. And God has, I've had many instances, not recently though, because this is a more younger crowd in the gym. I don't, they have their own faults, but they'll know to leave somebody alone for the most part while they're training. I don't know how many times back in the old world gym where you have a retiree or somebody come up and start making small talk with you between sets while you're trying to breathe even during your set, talking to someone during a set. Unbelievable. And at first, you know, you try to be nice to people, but then you soon, then I found out if I saw these same people, say at the Publix grocery store, and I came up and talked to them there, oh, they're in a hurry. They don't got time to talk. They want to do their shopping and get out of there. But when they're in the gym, wasting their own time and trying to uh, bother others, that was a name I coined called a psychic vampire. You come in there, you're focused. Then you got some older man. How you doing? How you doing? Coming up to me. How you doing? And you're at fault if you answer that question. That's the epitome of, of rudeness. But thankfully, it doesn't go on as much. So thanks, Dan Beetzel. And thanks for your message at the end of the letter that states, there's no name other than Christ for which we can be saved. And he also thanks me for introducing him to Andrew Kalora, the Meow Man. Yes, me and Andrew weren't afraid of gaining fat during our build-up phase. And God knows we got into condition. We were, or we had very low body fat, so we didn't have a problem doing it because we always had the discipline. So in 2023, Maniacs, you got to get back to the uh, progressive overload. 
intense training and good eating, good sleeping. And never sacrifice sleep for anything in life because that's probably the worst thing you can do. And I'll get into a live on sleep. I'm doing a lot of research on it, hearing a lot of lectures by Andrew Uberman, things like that. I'm starting to look at sleep as causing most of the health problems in the world today. Because you remember, over 100 years ago, you didn't have artificial light. You maybe had a candle or something or a torch, but things were pitch dark, pitch dark at night for the most part. And just so happens that's the ideal environment to sleep in. And there wasn't any of this nightlife for the most part, unless in the cities. But if you lived in the country, everybody went to bed when it got dark. And they got up at the crack of dawn, which has been scientifically proven to be the best. And Charlie Conway, the uh, answer to your question is no. As far as a certain someone losing their job, that's not, there's no truth to that. Josh, you should be able to find Anna draw 50 for yourself. Highly recommended after you have the basics in order. They don't go, don't go to one level before being a master at the other level because you look at some of the college football players, they can build a lot of size and strength naturally because they're eating good, have good training methods. So never exhaust one bridge until you perfect it. That's probably a mistake of many, many people would make. Yes, well, I stretch my pectorals a little bit, but I don't believe in static stretching or heavy duty stretching before a workout because you can actually have microscopic tears from the stretching and once you get under the weight, they can tear further. So pre-workout stretching is totally different than what they used to preach in the 80s and 90s. Even for athletic events, they used to, you'd see football players on the field before the game start stretching like crazy. They don't do that as much anymore. And a lot of times stretching can decrease your strength. So I do as little as possible. Saki Chin, I understand the concept of doing what works for you, but what is working for you, Saki Chin? Define, define what's working. Uh, that has a lot to do with what your goals are. But Saki Chin, say for instance, you are a six foot tall man and you weigh, let's say, 230, but you're 20, you're 30% body fat. What's working for you isn't working too well. Okay. Charlie Conway recommends stretching after training. Kaizen Productions. I'm not so sure about journaling at the end of the day. 
I think journaling in the morning, after if you have that period of meditation and prayer, uh, might be the most effective. Seven Lenny Sins. I'm not going keto now because I have muscle to put on. And for bodybuilding athletics, I don't believe in full keto. However, keto is always in the back seat whenever and whenever I'm ready to make that choice to get off insulin and make myself much more insulin sensitive. Marty, from what I know, Jay is fine, still training. And like all the other guys, getting ready to train at the powerhouse gym once it opens. And when that happens, it's anybody's guess. Yes, I recommend fat burners, Rusty Shackelford. However, that is after you start your diet and cardio. Always add a little bit in, a little bit in, a little bit in. Dub 87, that is so true. The broccoli heads. My God, I've seen someone do 10 or 20 sets of low intensity or very low reps. Complete waste of time. While continually lifting up the side of their shirt to check those intercostals. It's always that side abdominal pose and lifting up the shirt, not from the front, but from the side. Hans Klopek recommends moringa seeds for diabetes, for diabetes. Grunge truck is doing 30 minutes cardio before a workout and a three to mile five, three to five mile run after. And Crunch Truck, I hope your goals are not to be as strong and as massive as you possibly can, muscularly massive, because both of those protocols will hamper that, make it next to impossible. I guarantee you that. If I were short on time, stop flexing, how would I train? Basically the same as I do now, but I think I could, most people, if you really were clever and intense enough, you can actually strength train twice a week, doing half your body one day and the other half another. And they would obviously be two basic movements for body parts. <clears throat> Mike Santos, I agree. 2023 is a year to eat, sleep, and grow. James did barbell rails and barbell rows and pull-ups. He's absolutely destroyed. As you should be, James. Those two combined with some deadlifts of any form are the number one mass builders for back. <clears throat> Rowan Regas, that is so true. Things aren't always as they seem, as Christina would say. Seven Lenny Sins. It's possible you don't lose muscle, but you will lose muscle. You will lose a certain amount of muscle. However, you will not gain muscle. That's the issue. Mega fart, the most five cookie cutter exercises, in my opinion, are one arm reverse cable tricep extensions that cable abdominal movement where you grab the 
bar and you pull it down into your midsection. I would say also those ridiculous Arnold presses. Just do a press. I don't see the point of twisting those arms around. Also, I would have to say the hip thrust movement where everybody looks like they like put tons of weight on. Do your squats, do your deadlifts. Those muscles should be developed to the max. Kaizen Productions brings up an important point. The broccoli heads either do junk volume, junk volume or one rep crap. They never hit the sweet spot. Jason and Prince Andrew are, are fine. Rob D8870 says cocaine is a great fat burner and appetite suppressant. I don't know about the fat burner. Makes you feel smart and confident temporarily, Rob. Too many ups and downs there, Rob. Flex Kavana, isn't it nice to get some fresh air in Australia? As we are here with the humidity down in the winter months. Yes, Saki Chen. You'll see them, the experts at the gym. I call them the flexperts. Super strict lifting that emphasize slow motion training. Absolute nonsense. Bell Ploys 2.0, you certainly know how to throw the calories in. Thoughts on Cuban starting a trend cycle? Well, I hope he started a test cycle. I don't think he he confided into me that he was a lifetime natural. I hope he starts with the test first, but he would definitely experience incredible results with the test and trend. I saw I saw the uh, Gabe train. He knows what he's doing. He trains hard, basics. For a shirt. Yeah. Charlie Conway, I believe I was wearing my University of Pittsburgh U Green jersey. I don't know if anybody's old enough to remember, but U Green was an outstanding outside linebacker for the Pitt Panthers in the early 80s. His NFL career wasn't as good, but he was actually a Heisman Trophy candidate. <clears throat> Europa, the last battle. No, I haven't, Mike. I'm going to see it. Marty, I usually eat nine eggs at a time. I don't know why I came up with that number, because I buy the eggs at the 18 count of. And I do I do pay a little extra for Eggland's best eggs. Yes, Grunge Truck. Distance running is hard, but... I don't believe those long distances are optimal for the human body in certain ways. I don't believe we were meant to run long distances. <clears throat> Just look at the Ethiopians that continue to win the New York marathons. You want to look like that? Yes, Ro Rodriguez. Very important point. Never turn on the light to use the restroom when you wake up at night to pee and to drink your glutamine or whatever. Not good. James Van Heel, it certainly is, but we're getting a nice little cold front this week. Garrett, I would do no more than six sets. 
mostly you're on four sets. <coughs> Juggernaut says fast food hits the spot. I agree if you're out and you're in the car, <coughs> inconvenience. But the drawbacks are low nutrient quality and a horribly expensive price. Plus, cooked in vegetable oils. Did I, me and Kalor ever consider fighting Kimbo Slice? I did. Thoughts on a clockwork orange? Nothing good about it. It's one of those movies I call Degeneracy, promoting human filth. Uh, no redeeming value whatsoever. Thank you, SSG Cringe. Slow, controlled squeeze and stretch is not the only way to get big. Heavy, explosive explosion on the positive under heavy tension is far superior to the squeezes and stretches. Kai Green developed his size from being strong on the basic movements. Yes, Mr. G went off the uh, hor hormones, and at his age, I don't know if that's a good idea. He looks horrible. Not good, Jake Sellers. I hope you brought that to his attention. Jake Sidoli, don't do anything about your cookie cutter friends who want to get drunk at the pub. Don't do anything. You go to the gym, you go home, you cook, you eat, you put a nice documentary on, you watch Big Lenny Lives. Again, I'll say it now and I'll say it again. Stay off that booze, maniacs. At least 2023, steer clear of that. The worst of the worst of the worst. If you want to get a little buzz, get some Fenabut or something like that. Tony MC, you don't want to turn on the lights because light activates wake up mode to your body, which a normal sun rising in the morning does. And that's going to make it more difficult to go to sleep. Thoughts on playing a nice game of chess? Occasionally, it's a great idea, DD. However, far too many important subjects to learn in books and on the internet. Hello, Pelagic One, a 15-year-old maniac of Mexican descent. Proud to have you as part of the Misfit Maniac Army, young man. What will help you grow the quickest? Simple pelagic one, food, beef, eggs, cheese, milk, potatoes, fruits, vegetables, nuts, mayonnaise, peanut butter, natural peanut butter, olive oil, good stuff, chicken, turkey, fish, food well. And the heavy compound movements in the gym will cause the muscle fibers to break down and that food will repair it and you will get big. And make sure you're sleeping good, Pelagic. So concentrate on doing those things. And there's 15, that and your schoolwork and possibly some sports activities is what you should be doing. No supplement. Anything else is going to take place of that. And I suggest you be consistent because 
many of us would kill to be 15 again. And you have all the information at your fingertips right there, sir. So follow them to a T at eight. And by the time you're 18, you will be a monster. Charlie Conway, maybe one day he'll join us on a live, but he's up. He lives in Naples right now. Seven Lenny Sins. Why does Brad have a problem picking you up from your home? He just figure it out. Figure it out. Who's he with now? My favorite oil is macadamia nut oil. However, Karan, I like light olive oil for cooking. Extra volume olive oil is good. Yes, Dan St. Fernando, I learned that from Andrew Uberman to try not to be a mouth breather. My advice to you is just to concentrate on it. Even at your ear of the gym, when you're winded and you have a tendency to want to open your mouth, try to breathe through your nose. The more you do that, the better you'll feel and the better you'll be. Rob D8870, I do cook with bacon grease. Matter of fact, I, I rarely eat bacon, but I get the high quality and I cook it and I cook my eggs in it. And that's maybe like once a week. I'll have my eggs without bacon, but, and bacon is really not something economical right now, but I do that and I think it's great. No, JG, that's a good concept. Okay, what what are you gonna get is you're gonna get catabolic going on that diet. And then when you start blasting the tests and increasing the calories, you're gonna be more anabolic diets. So that's a workable method. I never did it though, but no, I'm in Lake Clark Shores, Hunch G. Good evening, Ethan Link. Aristophanes of Athens says, Mr. G says he knows three different fighting styles. <laughs> he also knows about three different words in the English language, so. Who could bench more at the old world gym, Synthol Mark or Victor? That's a good question, Mr. July. Victor used a medium to close grip bench and he did, he did 365 for 10 reps. So I would say they're pretty much, they were pretty much neck and neck. Rusty Shackleford says, boozers are losers. Absolutely. Megafart says, nothing good happens after 11. Absolutely. You can cut that down to 10. <clears throat> you only go out if you're earning money. <clears throat> At night, I'm talking about. Super Bowl winner. Yeah, I can, I'll go with the Bengals too, Charlie. That's why you pee in the sink or the bathtub, Rusty. Hello, River. Welcome to the Big Lenny Live. Thoughts on Dana White slapping his wife around? What's worse is both of them drinking. And that caused that. Thank you, Hans G. Alcohol is something the maniacs need to <clears throat> distance themselves. Thoughts on sports betting? Betting is not biblical. Betting is irrational. What's a good age to start taking steroids? Two years after you've perfected your training, your diet, and your recuperation and rest as far as sleep, days off, and so forth, and limiting other 
non-essential strenuous activities. And being consistent with doing this. Then you're ready to go, go something to the next level. Biggest regret, Tony MC? I didn't follow through with my plans of football player. Aristophanes of Athens says gambling is the most stupid thing on this planet. Yes, Aristophanes, it's so accepted. It so seems so sort of mainstream now, but think about it. Incredibly stupid. Incredibly stupid. Do I feel I played any part in the demise of Big Swole? Probably letting him go back to Louisiana. If I would have known that, I would have kept him here with me and keep an eye on him. Occasionally I dream. Who's stronger, Jay, Victor, or Mark? Victor and Mark, I never saw squat, so. And likewise, deadlift, but upper body strength, Jay had a 500 pound bench and he repped 405 on the incline, so. The old laptop is in storage, Charlie, and it probably needs fixed. Justin, I'm going to have uh, right bacon. It's very expensive. Cook bacon. Put some cheese on it, some uh, pink Himalayan salt. Charlie, I was a tight end youth, what they call flag football. Yes, Megafart, I would definitely dress up and do my best to become a broccoli head for five grand a month. My first impressions of Brad when I met him was, he seemed pretty serious. Nice guy. Charlie, I played Offensive tackle, defensive tackle, defensive end, offensive guard in high school. Angad Grewal, the biggest I ever got was 452 pounds 21 years ago in the summer. 452 pounds. Justin Robertson, yes, football is, it takes a getting used to. For a kid to come out and play, it gets, it's quite a shock effect. It's can be very, very disconcerting, but you get used to it. You get better. Just for football players, just hang in there. You'll get the hang of it. Yes. And I was always reminded, but not flagged by the officials for extending my arms as the NFL technique allowed them. And that's what the Pittsburgh Steelers used to do. They'd extend their arms and push the uh, defenders away from them. And I guess you had to keep your arms in in high school, apparently. So whatever. If I had to choose one Delray misfit to be your brother-in-law, who would it be? Well, since Brad the only, is the only one that has a sister, it would have to be Brad. Yes, Charlie Conway, football is a game of chess. It's a great game. Now, I know why those guys have to be college educated, or at least you won't see guys coming from high school to the pros. It just doesn't happen.
Yes, seven, old man Chuck with his half-speed story. Does anybody, do you think people are that stupid? Does he think anybody's going to believe that the Athletic Association in Philadelphia had to call him in for a special meeting and tell him that? Uh, we understand, Chuck, that you want to try out for high school football. Well, we had a meeting with our athletic organization. We may have a mandate for you. You can only play if you play half speed. What the hell is that supposed to mean, Chuck? That's the most ridiculous thing. Yes, old man Chuck and Mr. G. Well, old man Chuck, for the most part, he has some goofy things he said, but not anywhere near Mr. G. Mr. G is gone. Maybe they meant for Chuck to take half as much speed because he's so cooked. Charlie Conway, he took he would put 405 pounds on the bar, and he would do about four or five sets of this nonsense. He would go down, barely bending his knee. I mean, two-inch range of motion. I am serious. It was that bad. And he would actually look around and want accolades and he wanted to be honored for that. And he legitimately thought he was doing 405 for 10. Thoughts on why the pyramids were built? That's a good question. That's a good question. Probably for some yeah, I could very, very easily see some very important purpose because you look at the manpower it took to build those, as well as the deaths and the cost. Just for a decoration or a, or a monument, it's just not, that doesn't make any sense. Oh, yeah, he can put it on his back. Walk out with it, yeah. Yeah, you can call him that, Evan Gay Prundick. Knee shrugs. Yeah, whatever happened to Leslie, the psychotherapist? I said that from day one. She used to talk to Mr. G. There's a modern day Winston Churchill getting more ripped all the time. I see it, Adam. Impressive. Rob D8870 says the pyramids were built to try to establish a ruler's importance and ability up there with God's pure eagle, ego. That's a possibility. Did I ever hang out with a rough crowd? Uh, I don't know what you mean by rough. Uh, probably the roughest crowd I ever hung out with was high school football players. They're pretty rough. James Ratu, it's been confirmed the warlord could strict curl when he was younger, a 225 pound barbell for 12 reps. Yes, Nick, I'll re rush Rich Pian is bigger by the day. I've never drinking goat milk, no.
I would drink it if it was lactose free. I don't want to take any chances. No, Justin, I really haven't researched the Idaho Moscow murders at all. I may. I tend to. I learned all I, much I can about human filth and degeneracy. I'd rather focus more on learning about great human achievers, philosophers, scientists, things of that nature. Uh, I have two guns, user one, always on me. That's right, Raul Rodriguez. Many times the road warriors would finish the interview. We snack on danger, we dine on death, and dead men don't make money. His thoughts on Vince selling WWE to the Saudis? I'm shocked, Adam. I'm really shocked. Extremely shocked, to tell you the truth. I don't know what to make of it. Edward Charles, any new escapades with any 10, 10, 10s? No, absolutely not. And my lust for that has waned considerably, thank God. Pure perversion, that's all. And to tell you the truth, when they try to make it mainstream, it takes the appeal of her, uh, to me. My biggest thing was doing something so degenerate that it so perverse and something I'd be so ashamed of it was a turn on when you have and, and there's a, quite a few of them that I used to go to their house back in the 90s who are on some type of city council board on LGBT affairs making speeches I mean three or four of them which I find to be absolutely absurd DD as a Justin Robertson, what is my greatest personal growth moments? When I did something that was so difficult, mentally, physically, whatever, and I stuck with it and completed the task. Also, being able to survive certain situations. DD asked a great question. What would you rather be, a pro football player, pro wrestler, or a pro bodybuilder? Number one would be a pro football player, but the perfect thing for pro football players to do is get into pro wrestling, such as the great Ernie Ladd, Dick Affliss, Dick the Bruiser, Tito Santana, Bill Goldberg, Ron Simmons. Angela Mosca, Canadian Football League. Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Leon White, who was Big Van Vader. And George Wells, Canadian football player, was in WrestleMania 1, I believe, against Jake Roberts. And definitely a few others. Yes, Bradford's alive. I spoke to him yesterday. Everything's fine. Thank you, it's sick as piss. Good to see you. Was Brian Bosworth natural in college? No, actually, Charlie, he tested positive for DECA. So if you're on DECA, you're taking tests. However, seems to me they certainly brought out the best athletic ability in him. And I, re I recommend all maniacs look at Brian Bosworth highlights at Oklahoma. 
Take a look at the physique on him. Take a look at the speed. Aristophanes of Athens says, Lenny, what was the most perverted thing you saw in trapeze? Aristophanes, I would have to say... And this was a, not to single anybody out, but it happened quite a bit. The smell of, sh of feces engulfing the playroom. And I said to one of the bartenders, what, why is that smell? And she's like, someone's doing anal. It happens all the time. I'm like, good God. Yes, Charlie Conway, Brian Pillman hard to believe was actually a nose tackle for the Cincinnati Bell. He was more bulked up when he was a wrestler, but a nose tackle? Oh, and I forgot Lex Luger. Jake Sellers says, check out the video of Jim Duggan's house being broken into. I will. I didn't see that. Right? Jim the Anvil, Neidhart, many, many, many others. Yes, I remember Bosworth. He used to own companies that sold these shirts. Even shirts that made fun of him, he owned the company. He was, he was a genius. Yes, Charlie Conway. <clears throat> and I recommend everybody look up Bill Goldberg's Atlanta Falcons highlights. Not bad, if you ask me. And I first saw Bill Goldberg in the early 90s in the European Football League. Because I remember the announcer... Every play tackled by Bill Goldberg. And I remember the name Goldberg is a Jewish name. And I'm, I'm looking at the TV and it's like he's like an animal out there in the European League. Soccer is fun to play. I played a little in, in school, not for any school teams, but, you know, in physical education class. Does cardio equal conditioning? To a point, but the body can adapt to cardio. Therefore, are you conditioned enough for the particular endeavor you want to participate in? Just because you're good on a treadmill, is that going to enable you to go 10 rounds in a boxing ring? Charlie Colley always wanted Goldberg traps. Well, when you see a guy with freaky traps, number one, they're on PEDs. That's a given. No ifs, ands, or buts. The trapezius muscles have a very high affinity for androgen receptors. And I've noticed myself when I was younger, when I would go off the PEDs, my traps and shoulders became flat. I was still big, I was still strong, but the traps go. There's no reason Bradford Manor can't make that the go-to place for the maniacs. That's a huge amount of room, front yard and back. Like I said, envision the campers. Yes, Chris M. Paul Orndorff, University of Tampa. And I think he may have been in the Saints organization. Tyson Production says Brad's turning Bradford Manor into a amusement, an amusement park for himself. Bar, pool table, and hot tub. And I guess you can call the one room a man cave. That is, that is true, Kaisen. And I have to look at there are quite a few gentlemen that always spoke about having a hot tub at their house. 
They're fascinated by a hot tub. And that particular person was always very, shall we say, hedonistic. As far as Jay, he is training in the morning and not filming. Actually, Deep Purple, yeah, I'm taking a half a dosage every other day of Melanotin. I'm lucky that the bears who came down gave me a bottle of Melanotin. Yeah, Melanotin, too, is great. Yes, Kaizen Productions, I'd love to do a military-style inspection of Bradford Manor on film for a live. That would be great. Miguel Gonzalez wants to lose weight. Miguel, focus on building muscle. And don't worry about the scale. Get in the weight room, hit the basic movements, stay consistent, get a consistent diet, eat a lot of meat, eggs, potatoes, rice, pasta, fruits, vegetables, milk, things like that, get some good sleep. Yes, ooh and on in a hot tub. I could just picture Brad in that hot tub with a smoke in his mouth and drinks with holders on the side. Isn't it great? Seven Lenny Sins, I think I would need a vehicle to do that, but... That's a great idea. I'll definitely keep that in the uh, for future protocol. Yes, Scotty, I've had sciatica. And I can remember every time I had it. Luckily, it's been rare. Luckily, it hasn't been recently. But that will lay you up for weeks. It's your body's way of saying to protect damage to the spinal cord, it immobilizes itself. So the good news is you can recover. It's gonna be very careful, but you really shouldn't get them deadlifting. That's why I don't deadlift off the floor. That'll increase your chances. Brad is probably having a booze party on Super Bowl Sunday. Thoughts on JJ Watt never completing a full season? I think he's such an, just an intense player that he knows the slightest bit of injury will not make him as effective. And he's enough of a team player to say, hey, let's get one of the reserves in there. Is prime Mike Tyson the best boxer of all time? As prelegit one. He's one of the best. Although I believe Prime George Foreman, Ali, Joe Frazier, possibly have beat him. Johnny B, do I think the Tate brothers are guilty? No, I think that's an overblown charge, but I suspect that there's a small chance Pontiflex recommends in praise of a new knighthood by St. Bernard. Kaizen, I agree with you, Kaizen Productions. George Foreman in his prime would have gave prime Mike Tyson lots of problems, absolutely. Great power. Arm reach, definitely. That's right, Seven Lenny Sins. You're right about that, and I intend to. Kaizen Productions points that Foreman beat out a lot of 
boxer similar to Tyson. Very true. Thank you, Tyson. So, hopefully, all maniacs will basically have a form of high intensity training as your muscle strengthening and hypertrophy protocol. To me, there's nothing superior and particularly progressive overload. Brief to the point where those shots should be most intense where you won't be able to duplicate that. Although that's the reason I recommend and I do two sets. I don't go into the one all out set routine. I think two sets is fine. That's how me and Meow Man did. That's how Meow Man got to bench 500 pounds for nine reps and bench 650. Highly recommend it and emphasize the recuperation and the nutrition. It's actually all very simple. The toughest part is implementing all that in a modern day cookie cutter society. And maniacs, I'll say it now, I'll say it again. There's no reason to limit your sleep for any worldly pursuit. It's just not necessary and it's counterproductive. Maximize your sleep, take it seriously. Try to get to sleep at 10. I know some people have other obligations, but make sure those obligations are where you're earning money. Let's, let's in 2023 and beyond, let's emphasize the point of nightlife is cookie cutter, alcohol is cookie cutter and poison and pure garbage. The worst thing you can put into your body. And with these principles, you can achieve anything you want. And is it easy? No. Who wants easy anyway? Embrace hard. Embrace pain. Embrace the challenge. You can hear the cookie cutters. They love complaining out loud. Why me? Everything bad happens to me. Why can't I get a break? Blaming others, blaming this, blaming that. When in reality, you should be thanking God for each problem or so-called problem that enters your life because it's not a problem, it's a challenge. All right, maniacs, thanks for joining me and get some good REM sleep. Good night.